process of exploring, um, understanding the site, understanding its culture, understanding its context to its surroundings. And so there's a series of issues that we always engage in in this process. And this site is actually quite complex. It has um, built form that's, that's residential above, but actually some retail at grade. It has important linkages. And because the site is is somewhat secluded, it, it was also important for us to understand how to improve the linkages and connections to um, uh, to the city framework and to the street framework, and then work within the context of all the programming ideas. And, and what I'm going to show you is really a process of interpreting uh, what we've heard and beginning to put a conceptual framework in place that um, begins to explore program sites context and all the issues of connectivity um, and a destination because I think there's a desire that, that this is really a successful space that can be used um, by all levels of ability um, all, all through each of the seasons. And so this is our first concept. It basically um, defines the central area, the, the existing This is where the existing pavilion is. And one of the opportunities that we saw from the central point of the pavilion, because it really is a knuckle point on the site, is to perhaps break it up and, and form it into actually, uh, instead of a large building, into two pavilions. And notwithstanding the discussion on whether washrooms are appropriate or not, we, we certainly want to try and incorporate off, at grade rather than below grade if, if the skating is going to remain as an activity, it requires infrastructure. Infrastructure that's mechanical, electrical, uh, you know, the compressors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the housing for that, you know, could certainly be incorporated into one of these two pavilions. Um, and so, you know, we don't have an exact program for that, but we would like to break the scale down of those two spaces and, and open up some sight lines uh, be between them rather than creating a blockage at this point across the site, because it is quite an important spot within the site. The, the opportunity then is to understand, and let's just talk about skating, because you know, this, this park, its main activity through certainly the winter has been skating. Um, the problem that we saw was that, notwithstanding it, it's tired and, and, and it's aged, is what does it become in the summer? The reflecting pool that's currently there um, does not seem to be uh, overly utilized. It seems to have uh, some problems with it. And so in our discussions, we felt that if we could still incorporate skating, and the, the image that was most compelling to everyone in the sessions was the idea of not just an open body of, of, of uh, ice, but actually the idea of skating almost as a lineal you know, kind of experience, uh, a, a circuit system, a loop system. And the image that we showed was actually from a park down on the waterfront, Sam Smith Park, where it was actually a loop system. And so this concept begins to explore that idea that, that there's a, a structural element, and it's really an open webbed uh, metal framed uh, arbor piece that is really the initiation. It gives you a bit of, a bit of canopy. It, it's not meant to be totally enclosed, and I'll show you an image in a, in a bit of sort of one precedent that we feel has relevance. But the idea then is from these pavilions where the skate uh, you know, uh, change could occur, is that we actually then have a loop system. And I think this was quite compelling to a number of, uh, of people in the last session, that you actually skate through the landscape. And the idea that the edges become opportunities to, begin, to introduce a canopy layer, um, you know, and also a, a, a textured ground plane uh, would actually be quite compelling. And so the idea was that we would explore this idea of a loop system that would really be not a depressed element on the site, but actually flush with the, with the adjacent paving. It may just have a different uh, materiality expression, expression to it. That would then define new, new places on the site. And the central one would be this site, which uh, would basically be uh, an open area because I think when you have a park of, of, of this nature with the opportunity that all the residents on, on the adjacent edges to this site could actually have a flexible space where if, for instance, the, you know, there was the idea about is there, 
you know, a programmed activity? Is, it, is there a theater night? Is there a, a community event that could occur here? I think the opportunity to have this open, flexible space certainly has, um, you know, certainly has some advantage to do that. And it could also be used as just a very casual seating space on a, on a, on a grass surface. Now, I know, you know there's a desire not to have a lot of grass on the site, and you know, Christine and I debated, well, if, if the maintenance is an issue, but the idea has validity, you know, we could always look at a synthetic material that is, that is quite technically advanced now to actually achieve that. But you, know, you could imagine sitting under a canopy tree and just, you know, just reading a book on, 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 on the ground plane. Um, you know, in, in a space like this. The, the other loop is the idea that we could actually introduce um, a different element of water. It's, it's not the big surface any longer that, that, that defines the skating area, but in fact it is an area that could have two types of lighting, and I'll show you some images. One is that it could have a, a series of vertical masks that could be um, uh, animated uh, with, with water that could spray off the top edge um, and also a series of, of mist jets within the ground plane itself. And, and uh, you know, I think the idea is that in the winter, you know, this could be you know, um, closed down but, and then the skating would take over and there could be even some informal seating within that space um, as well, but that they would not interfere as, as activities one to the other. The visual access through this space, we gave some real thought to because I think it's important that when you're walking along Young Street or the edges that come into the site, that you actually get a signal that something is quite unique and it almost wants to, to pull you into the site. And so the idea of, of a, a gateway piece of some sort, we were quite compelled by the, the gateways on the eastern side of, of Young Street and those is, they're not shown on this plan, but those is kind of reference signals to then repeat an element on, on the west side and draw you into the site uh, we have to leave room for a, a fire truck in terms of, of emergency access, but this becomes almost a lineal kind of pedestrian way that it has a series, a uh, rhythm of, of vertical wall pieces, again, that could have lighting incorporated into them, and they begin to then create these smaller seating pockets where informal uh, dining tables or outdoor cafe tables could occur with, with seating, and they become almost you know a different type of seating. We, we, worked hard to introduce a variety of seating opportunities within the site. But with the addition of, a, of an LA of, of canopy and shade trees, these actually become at a scale which is right, quite important you know, as it compares to the more open scale within the site itself. The ending of that becomes almost a gateway piece with seating and a back planting almost as an arc, and it could have an arbor piece over the top of it. So this, this actually really has an incredible potential to have a, quite a distinct character uh, within itself. The, the visual line then actually brings you to a, what we call a, a kind of a focal specimen, and the idea here is that this could actually be a, a, a very large specimen conifer that could be lit um, during the you know during the, uh, uh, the holiday season and actually be on a visual access line uh, you know from the entry, so it becomes kind of a, a visual vertical focal element. Then within the texture of the planting that the skating would, would work around. This element here is, and there was again a fair amount of discussion about the number of dogs that um, that are brought and you know residents use the park for. Um, this is really a precedent that we, we explored, which is in Chicago. And what it is, is it's a double fenced in court. Um, there's a, a, an, inner, an outer ring where you bring your dog in, you can take the leash off, there's a second gate, and then there's a, an area within that where the dogs can basically um, you know, have, have uh, an unleashed uh, area. The city does have a number of dog parks. This is at a completely different scale and a completely different approach because everything again is is set into the context that this is a this is a soft space as well, and you know the edges would be textured with the low maintenance planting and and strategically placed trees. Um, there would be a water element within that space, and I'll show you a few images after I, I work my way through the plan. The uh, west edge of this concept is is this idea of having a of course access to the townhomes, which uh, would certainly be necessary. But this is almost like a, a lineal ribbon garden or a lineal kind of park walkway, and 
the different greens that you see on the plan and the, and the canopy of trees really express this kind of organic and formal uh, kind of character of the space. Uh, the textures represent the possibility of different materials that could have a, uh, a, a different pattern through the growing seasons. Uh, and also the opportunity at strategic points to add uh, seeding, for instance, uh, that works basically uh, throughout this space so that Again, you could sit at any one of these spaces within this within this very kind of soft and canopy uh, lineal landscape. Uh, but it also creates for those that just want to take a walk uh, over lunch hour if you're working in the area, or early in the morning or whenever that you actually have this really kind of narrative that you can walk through um, that is quite different than you know than a more direct kind of open uh, walkway through the park. There are areas that are paved that are specifically left open and larger because of the desire for uh, city maintenance vehicles and emergency vehicles to come into the park from the access that we need to re, re, you know, leave sufficient space for you know, uh, Zamboni, which would probably occur in this space, and maneuverability of those vehicles um, within the park. But they also provide the added opportunity, again, uh, when we work through the initial visioning with um, PPS, the um, firm from New York City, there was an, a lot of opportunities, if, if there are flexible open spaces, that they could be left for programmed or spontaneous um, uh, larger uh, community events uh, within the park itself. The edge along the south is really, again, the idea of a community garden, but we interpret it almost as a series of, of kind of lineal uh, low shrub beds, an informal planting of trees, and basically again a different nature of seeding that could occur along this entire edge. There are some elements that we have to incorporate. There are skylights here that are incorporated a, a ramp down. So there are some elements, and such as these, the, the stairwells that currently exist on the site that also uh, have to be incorporated in, into the plan. And so this plan is, in, in, in summary then, is is really about, oh, sorry, I've missed one spot. The, the idea of an arced inset within the central green, uh, which could have a second small water feature of a, of a completely different character than, than, than this one. So this one you could actually interact with. This is really more of a quieter sitting space with water as a calming element. It's almost a, a space of repose, if you like, that, that uh, could be um, you know, just a favorite spot during, during the day or, or in the morning. And so here's some of the images. This is Sam Smith Park, where this, you know, the, the, the loop um, skating rink is is uh, currently occurring. It seems to be quite you know, working quite well. The idea of the arbor, and, and again, we, we this is an example actually in Kelowna of a frame, you know, kind of metal uh, system that basically creates kind of an interesting canopy uh, overhead, and then with the you know, in this particular case, colored glass discs were used to actually, when, when sunlight penetrates through, it creates a, a very kind of magical uh, uh, kind of play on light and sun um, through that. Now, uh, this image, I don't know if you can all see it, but this is the dog park in Chicago. And we think this, you know, is the kind of uh, space that the canopy layer would fit in the context of the entire canopy layer of the park. But the ground plane then basically begins to form these spaces where um, you know, water feeding station and a place where the dogs can basically you know, run uh, or you know, be with the with owners uh, within that space but can be unleashed. The mist as an idea uh, relative to the vertical mass and you know these are wooden poles but we certainly see the opportunity to play with the materiality of, of that kind of an idea where you get a, a broadcast of water but these could also be interesting uh, when they're lit um, and LED lighting has come in, an amazing way in terms of its technology that at night they can almost be, be markers in a very subtle way uh, within the park itself. Lighting is can be achieved in many different ways. I mean, you know, they don't necessarily have to be light standards with uh, with cap uh, lighting on top. You know, elements within the park that can be used just as, as, as kind of seating elements, but lighting is incorporated into it. So that, in fact, the park begins to take on its own personality through the furnishings that are introduced into it. The, the, this is really just an image that, that basically says, you know, canopy and color and texture and, and really designing to um, 
capture the senses is a really nice idea. And so every time you potentially come to the park, whether it's in the spring or summer or fall, through the color sequencing and the actual character of the branch structure, one can begin to orchestrate uh, you know, the personality of, of this place in a very special way. The, the edges to the walkways, and this is actually in Paris, but what it is, it's, it's this very broad you know, uh, walkway that's probably about 20 feet wide. Um, and just you know, the casual placement of these benches <coughs> creates this, this dialogue between the walkers and, and those that are sitting. And, and people you know, just really enjoy watching people. And I think some of the edges that we form to create these softer areas could have this personality <coughs> as well. And then this is how we use these, the idea of these low-framed, uh, structured, low hedges uh, that do not block views, but they actually define space. And you know, when one begins to integrate seating into them, they actually create these smaller rooms in the landscape. <clears throat> and this is what we interpret as an idea on the south, on the south edge. The upper uh, image is in a part where the idea of adding a screen and a programmed idea of, uh, you know, a, a come to the park for a film night is really, you know, it's a programmed idea, but if our, if our park can accommodate those ideas, if there is a will to, to do that, it, you know, it would be great if we could actually achieve that. different kind of interpretation of the same elements.